Hello and welcome to Certifiably Secure and Slightly Shellarious, a whimsical introduction to secure shell certificates. My name is Thomas Boeve, I am a technical engineer at CounterHack, and I have the distinct pleasure of being one of Santa's many helpers in this year's KringleCon and SANS Holiday Hack Challenge events. Now, for this presentation, uh, I want to take you through a practical demo on how to convert your existing secure shell setup uh, into one that actually leverages uh, certificates. Uh, but before doing so, let's just go through a small scenario. Imagine that you're connecting to a secure shell server for the first time. Um, you're typically going to be presented with this kind of a message where the server presents you with its uh, or their fingerprint and you're asked if you can confirm it's correct and if you want to continue on with the connection. Now, unless you have a list of known good key fingerprints that you can validate this against, um, there's really no other way to add any trust into this uh, particular scenario. Uh, you typically press yes, you connect to the host, uh, and you don't really worry about things too much uh, after that. Now, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could add a similar concept uh, to Secure Shell as we already have for websites through SSL certificates? Well, we can. Um, by introducing a Secure Shell Certificate Authority, uh, which is responsible for signing uh, all the different public keys uh, that are used within um, a Secure Shell environment, and having all our different entities, uh, clients and servers, trust that particular certificate authority, we can do just that. Um, when we add certificates, when a client connects to a server and the server um, presents that client with its certificate, the client can validate that it was signed by an entity that, it's tr that it trusts. And if that, that is the case, it can then send back its own certificate, which contains its public key, and the, the server can basically do the same thing, validate that the client's certificate has been signed by an entity that it trusts. And again, if that's the case, the server can allow that client uh, to connect in. Now, this has obviously the trust component, but there's a lot of additional things that secure shell certificates add into the mix, a lot of additional benefits. So just let's, let's look at a few of those. Um, First of all, um, certificates add an identity uh, into the certificate, and that identity gets logged into access logs. So if you're um, on a blue team and you need to go through logs, you need to parse those, uh, you can actually use that identifier to better understand who exactly it was that connected into the host. Secondly, certificates can also have a validity period. Um, you can say that a particular certificate uh, needs to expire at a certain date. Uh, you can say that it never needs to expire, but you can just as well say it should only be valid for one day, one week, a month, a year. Certificates also allow you to define one or more principles. And a principle, you can think of that as a role. Um, when a client connects to a, a, a server, um, the principle is basically going to define the role that that user can or that client can assume uh, on that particular host, uh, which adds an additional nice feature into the mix. You, you can not only use your certificates now for authentication, but you can also use them for authorization, which is very useful. Next, you obviously solve the trust on first use issue um, because there's an automatic way for you to validate those server certificates. Um, if it's signed by a CA that you trust, you can continue on with that connection and you don't need to answer that annoying question that we saw previously. There's also the, a huge benefit in the fact that um, we don't need to manage those various public keys and authorized key files anymore um, across all the different accounts, across all the different hosts in our environment. Um, nothing really needs to be copied to the server. Uh, the server validates keys or certificates um, using the certificate authority that it trusts. And so that solves a huge management problem in that case. Um, also, we can define restrictions on our certificates. So while we can say that a certificate can be used for logging into a host, we can say it cannot be used for port forwarding. And so no tunneling should be allowed over that SSH connection, which is handy. And finally, we can also 
just like SSL certificates, say that a um, SSH certificate should be uh, revoked. Uh, for example, when one gets stolen, uh, we can mark it as revoked across our infrastructure. Um, and from that point on, that certificate cannot be used for logging in to our hosts anymore. Now that's a, that's a lot of like positives that adding certificates um, bring to the table. Um, so let's see how we can actually put this in practice and convert a basic install, basic secure shell install uh, into one that uses certificates. Through the magic of video editing and video transitions, uh, we've made it into our demo environment. Uh, I've also become a little bit smaller um, so we can all see the uh, terminal output just a little bit better. On the left terminal, I'll be issuing all the client commands and on the right terminal, I'll be issuing everything that needs to be done uh, server side. So let's first start off by logging into uh, my server. There we go. Uh, we get that trust on first use uh, message. Um, I can verify the key because I have access to that host. So I say yes, and I log in via password, which will disable in just a bit. First step to setting up certificates is creating your certificate authority key pair. So we use SSH keygen for that uh, with a particular comment and we store it in a file called CA. Uh, I'm not going to use passwords or passphrases here, um, but obviously when you set this up yourself or at home, uh, always make sure you set a very strong password and protect this key pair very well because it's used uh, for issuing all, is, issuing all the certificates that allow you to access your various hosts. So uh, be very mindful of that. Now with that key pair created, see, there we go. Um, let's copy over the host keys from our server. Uh, which are generated by default when you install SSH uh, and copy them over to that folder. And let's sign each individual one of those files. Um, SSH keygen is again the command that we use for this. Uh, H denotes that we're signing for a host. Uh, S means that we're signing and we need to specify obviously the, the, the key file uh, that we're signing with. The Z parameter or Z parameter is the serial number and we start with one and we're going to incrementally uh, add to that as we sign more uh, or create more certificates. And then um, capital uh, I is our identity name, uh, which I've chosen to be my SSH server, but that's really arbitrary. Uh, you can choose that. Uh, capital V is the validity period. So in this case, from five minutes before generating a certificate to one week after generating the certificate. And then the principal name is going to be the IP address of that particular host. Um, and obviously, finally, you need to specify the public key as well, because that's what we're going to be embedding in that certificate. So run that for this. <clears throat> Excuse me. First key uh, for first public key, for the second public key, and for the third host key as well. And as you can see, we increment our serial numbers uh, from one to two to three. Um, if we want to look at properties for a generator certificate, we can use SSH keygen, SSH keygen as well using the capital L parameter and then host keys. And let's select just one of the keys to see. So we can see the public key fingerprint, the fingerprint for the certificate authority that, that signed this, key ID, serial number, validity time, and then any principles. Awesome. So let's copy those back over into our SSH uh, server. There we go. I'm including the certificate authorities public key because that is what the server is going to be using to validate incoming client certificates. Uh, so make sure that that is included as you copy things over. And let's become root and move those files into their proper location where they can be picked up by the SSH daemon. Let's make sure ownership of these files is correct. And that looks like it's OK. OK, so the next step is we need to change or update these secure shell configuration to actually um, take these files into account. So let's do that now. So let's add a config file. And in that config file, we specify what the host keys are, what the certificates for those host keys are, uh, what certificate authority public key should be used to validate uh, incoming client certificates. And while we're at it, well, let's, let's just disable the password authentication because that's not secure anyway. So let's do all of that and then restart the SSH daemon or SSH service. There we go. Now, the first thing I kind of want to 
highlight after doing this is that um, we don't get that trust on first use message any message anymore. So let me take the public key for the certificate authority because that's what the client is going to use to validate the uh, host's certificate. And let's update our known hosts file, remove the entries that were added by accepting that trust on first use message previously, and now adding an entry which is going to say, for this host with this IP address, validate the um, host certificate using this um, certificate authority public key. This doesn't have to be an IP address. This can be an IP range. It could be a um, particular domain uh, with a wildcard for all hosts that have a domain name that match or a host name that matches that. Um, you can have a single entry here that spans a variety of hosts. It doesn't have to be one entry per host uh, per se. Uh, that would be a very tedious uh, thing to manage, obviously. So that's that's not necessarily necessary. There we go. Now what we can do is we can try and log in to the server as we did previously. There we go. We obviously get an access denied message because we don't have a key yet to use for logging in, uh, but we don't get that trust on first use message anymore because the client now is able to validate that host certificate uh, by using that uh, certificate authority public key that we've defined. So that issue has been solved. We've got some trust going on in our environment. Okay, so the next step is we need to generate a key for a, a user so they can connect into the host. So let's let's make a key pair for Tinsel Upper Tree. Same as we did for the certificate, certificate authority key pair, just the same command, uh, just a different file that we want to save it in. There we go. So we have our key pair ready to go. And we can nice now sign it in the same way, just leave off the, the H uh, parameter because we're not signing for a host, we're signing for a client. Um, the rest is similar. Uh, in this case, for example, I've specified a one year validity time and I've increased my serial number to, to four. So we can generate that key and we should now be able to log in to the server as Tinsel, uh, your Tinsel account with that particular key that I've generated. So let's try that. And there we go. We are in. Now, um, having by default, what happens is the SSH server is, if you don't specify it explicitly, is going to use the principle to map to an existing account on the server. So the Tinsel principle in my uh, certificate uh, will allow me to access the Tinsel account on the server. Now, that's a little bit restrictive. Uh, sometimes then there's not a direct mapping. Sometimes multiple users will use a single account and you, you want to be able to still identify or uh, apply different principles for those, those certificates. So there's a concept or an idea that you can apply um, in your configuration, which is uh, an authorized principles file, which will define those mappings. So let's add that now. Uh, first of all, let's change our configuration or update our configuration rather uh, so we can leverage uh, one of those mapping configurations uh, so we're basically saying hey if you need to map um, a principle to a, a username just go look in this folder uh, for the appropriate username and see what principles are defined there so save that let's restart the ssh service there we go and let's create that principles folder now imagine that we have a scenario where we have a deployment account. And I think I actually might have, uh, there we go. We have a deployment user on this host as well. So imagine that we have deployment accounts uh, on all of our um, secure shell servers uh, in our infrastructure, but we only want to give access to web servers with that account to a certain set of users. Uh, but at the same time, we want to make sure that Santa can access everything, both the database servers and the web servers and whatever's in our infrastructure. Well. We can do that by applying multiple principal names to a single account using uh, this particular configuration. So for example, let's add um, two principles for the deployment account, one principle called web servers and one principle called big boss. Let's look what that, take a peek at what that looks like. So when any, any certificate now that has the either the web servers principle or big boss principle is going to be allowed access to the deployment account on this particular host. So let's go back to our client. Let's sign and not use tinsel. Let's let's use web servers. What will happen is I won't have access to tinsel anymore 
because I'm now looking at that mapping file on the server side to define or determine who I can log in as. And I, I don't have the proper mapping for that. But I, who I can log in to though, the account I can log into is deployment. Because I have the web server principle uh, on my certificate. Now, if I still want to be able to log in as Tinsel, uh, because I added auth principles as a configuration option, I kind of need to add an additional entry in that folder, uh, which maps the Tinsel user to the Tinsel principle. Uh, so let's do that here as well. Now I have two files for two users in that in that particular folder, one for deployment, which has the principles that are allowed for the deployment account, and then one for Tinsel, which has the uh, principle that is allowed for the Tinsel account. And let's update our Tinsel certificate to include, not replace, but include the Tinsel principle as well. What this allows us is it still gives us access to that deployment account, but at the same time, it now also gives us back the access to the Tinsel user. And that's how you, you can mix and match and allow um, one user to have access to the same host with different um, permissions or different um, roles, for example. Um, let's say, for example, you want to have Tinsel uh, be able to access all web servers with elevated privileges, uh, but still be also able to access any host in the development environment, be it database servers or, or web servers, um, you can do that by applying the appropriate set of principles to Tinsel's certificate, basically. One thing to keep in note, however, with this setup is um, even though you're introducing a lot of useful additional features to a standard uh, SSH configuration, your certificate authority keys become very, very critical and need to be protected, right? Um, Unauthorized access to those keys would allow anyone to generate certificates um, and access your hosts. If you're using this in a setup where the certificate generation or creation is an automated process, for example, via a website, uh, you need to make sure that that website is, is created in a, in, a, in a secure way and uh, there's no there's no gaps or, or issues that might you allow an unauthorized user, let's say, uh, to abuse uh, any mechanisms to, uh, to to sign their own, um, create their own certificates, or add potential principles to certificates um, that they're not supposed to. So be very mindful of that because that's obviously a very critical um, point and and um, item in in this type of a setup. Now, I, I hope this was educational. I hope you've learned something uh, about SSH certificates. Uh, I hope you see the value in applying this type of a configuration as well. But um, I mean, Geese Islands, awesome. The weather outside is like amazing. Um, I think we've we've been at it for for enough time now. So I'll go head outside. I'll go like, catch some waves and go do some surfing now. Uh, but enjoy the rest of your time at Geese Islands. Enjoy the rest of your time at the Sands Holiday Hack Challenge and KringleCon. And uh, I will see you in the next one. So have a great day. Bye.